8th of November, 2016, 8 p.m., Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi addresses the nation and announces demonetization of high denomination notes. 84% of currency in circulation ceased to be legal tender. During the last two, three weeks, or last two, three months, I would say, there have been a lot of debates whether the purpose for which demonetization had taken place have been achieved. That requires a debate by itself for greater appreciation. But one point that is well appreciated, and there has been consensus on the collateral benefit of demonetization, that is the focus on digital payments. During the, digital payments is not really a, just recently that we have talked about after demonetization. No, digitization of payments we are really talking about right from 90s. I have been, I have been working in Reserve Bank of India for a pretty long time in the area of payment systems. And the first digital payment system that we launched is electronic clearing service, ECS credit, ECS debit, in early 90s. We launched RTGS system, NEFT system, but all these systems that we launched, we learned, you know, we learned a lot, looked at the solution from the West. We studied their system, we replicated them, and we did, we marched ahead. Gone are those days. Today, in fact, there is a reverse flow. It is they who are really going to talk about it. Reserve Bank of India created a new department called Department of Payment System in 2005. I had the privilege of being the first, uh, the chief general manager, departmental head in the central office on policy formulation on digital payments. We brought out the vision document. Thereafter, three more vision documents have been created, all talking about how we build a less caste society. Less caste society, in simple English, less of cash. Means cash, amount of cash is less, but all of our transactions must go through. Because of not having cash, no transaction should suffer. That is very essential component. So with less of cash, how can all of our requirements, if we are city dwellers, going to the shopping mall, food plaza, vegetable uh, shops, trains, buses, autos, all the bills, how we can pay electronically and don't depend on cash. So, the money is there, money is not reduced, but money in the form of currency notes, I promise to pay with signature of the governor, that is not there. But money is in the account. Using that account, how we do that? So we say, no cash, go digital. Means we pay digitally for the transactions that we do that is less cash, and that vision has been stated all along. It is during this period of demonetization that it, it was brought to focus that it is not just Reserve Bank and the commercial bank or banking systems activity to talk about uh, less cash society. It is, this, it, is the really, it is the requirement for the country. We are talking about food for all house for all, education for all, health for all. Our country should go, grow, uh, should, should be, our GDP should grow. We should be the second or third largest economy in the world. If that happens, it results into higher GDP, higher income of the people. People who do not know what a breakfast means, they would have breakfast, they would have you know, milk and fruits on their table. House is there. They will pay, they will really go for holidaying. They will have good clothes to uh, really wear. All these things require monetary transactions. You imagine if the growth happens 
and we become the third largest. We, I, I trust you all believe that India can really reach that stage. Reserve Bank would have to build possibly 10 printing press instead of really two by Reserve Bank and one by government. 10 more printing press to really just manage cash and the attendant, you know, the evils of cash. So let me not really go really the black money, this non-transparency, data being not available, these are being talked about, the fake currency, these are all the really uh, the evils of cash. Not only we attend to that, we build a rich data on the basis of data. If the persons do transactions, the trans on the basis of transactions data, there is a really credit scoring of the people. In such a large country, we would like to take our people, lift the people, and be the third largest economic power. How can you do when such a large number of people, they are not under even credit rating. Who would give the credit, the loans? They have to be brought to the formal economy. All these, these attendants, uh, the attendant benefits make it a practical necessity. I'm really, let me repeat, uh, repeat, a practical necessity for the country as a preparation for to be the third largest or second largest economy world. That preparation is a, is a visionary work that government, reserve bank, the, 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 the intelligentsia, all would have to work and think through and build the last caste society. So all these things that I have shared with you, they're all facts, all of you know very well. The statement that I'm going to make and share with you that India has now the unique position to lead the globe in being the first large economy to be really a reasonably last caste society. And again, let me really redefine last caste society. It means the society managing all the transactions and even more transactions with less than 60% of the currency that you use than what you use today. That means the 17 lakh crores of really cash which is really in circulation in the country. After demonetization, they have all gone, gone back. They had become ceased to legal tender. They have come back 90%. So in technical terms, the currency to GDP ratio, which used to be about 12%, 12.3%, came down to about 4, 4%. It has on, again gone back to 11%. How do we bring it down to really five to four to five percent. That is a strategy that needs to be done. Singapore, Sweden, quite a few countries, they have done it. They have really very low uh, currency to GDP ratio, largely cashless. They have already achieved, but not the large economy, not the economy of such a big geographical scale. It is India which can really take the lead. And our time under the sun has come and we need to play a role. Th three stories to tell, what makes me believe that it would happen. The, as you know, we are really learning faster, we are moving, uh, you know, we are implementing in a smarter, we can do it. But the, in doing that, the story number one is the story of NPCI as an institutional innovation. When I say NPCI, National Payments Corporation of India, I had the privilege of leading this unique institution for eight and a half years, still very last month. That is where really I retired last month. That this eight, thank you so much. So during these eight, eight years, NPCI has brought an amazing result. What the country was looking for payment system solution now the country is looking to NPCI for all retail payment solutions. In the matter of eight years, as many as 12 electronic products have been brought out. The first, thing, and brought out, and what is most important, most important, is brought interoperability. That means all the banks, all the non-banks, all the wallet players, 
Anybody engaged in payment systems, they are part of a big network. Then only you can touch everybody's life. NPCI has been creating, has been created with a mission to touch everyone's life by 2020 with one or other electronic payment products. And it is with that pace that it is working. First thing it brought out in 2010 itself is IMPS, Immediate Payment System. World's first instant money transfer system. <laughs> UK had done it a year earlier, but in UK, the banks had the choice to delay the credit to customer's account by two hours. In India, it started just instant. And that IMPS over a period of time has become not only smartphone based, it has gone to uh, the feature phone, it has become channel agnostic, it has become internet based, it has become voice based, it has become uh, really uh, in all possible. And the crown jewel of uh, this IMPS on the same rails is the UPI, which you all have heard and a few of, few of you have really, or many of you really who have already used UPI, you would have known the power of UPI. Amazing product. People really, the world is just astonished how India can do it, such amazing product of instant credit, instant collect, you know, email-like financial address, and a, a host of rich features that you can connect if you have got four or five bank accounts with a single app the way you go to one ATM and, and draw cash from, even if the uh, ATM is, does not belong to you because of interoperability created by NPCI, now an application has become interoperability. Sit on that application and you navigate to all your accounts. And completely open sourced. And uh, let me share with you, in, uh, in 2000, uh, in three years back, I had been to US uh, and I visited Google. That time, really, uh, Sundar Pichai, really nobody knew that he would hear the Google. I had the privilege of talking to for half an hour. That time, UPI was not there. I had gone to pitch the idea that IMPS is one that you can really put in on your system. And I was told that now we are really planning a wallet product that is our global strategy. And you would have seen during the last few days, last week, Google has launched UPI, they have adopted Indian system, the really thinking that UPI is a better alternative than the global strategy that they had. India took the lead in the really mobile payment strategy. So the NPCI has also created the, as you know, the world's first uh, really successful domestic card payment network. Why I say first domestic card payment network is in many countries, they have created rupee-like domestic card payment network to universalize card payment system. Now rupee has come and being the most successful, reaching 800 plus banks, till four decades of operations of international card companies, only 53 banks had, had access to card payment service. Thanks to the new infrastructure and interoperability of NPCI, now 800 plus banks have really come. With this institutional in innovation is story number one. Story number two is the JAM Trinity, which you have heard of, the JAM Trinity, J-A-M, J for Jandhan, giving, opening of account. Uh, the, uh, this is the lunch of the JAM Trinity where rupee card was adopted for everybody. That is how the card payment system got universalized. A person holding a card and standing on the ATM, even if he is rich or, or poor, if a person has got the card and standing in the queue to draw the AT card money, he is really equal access. It is a great democratization process. Having the access to bank account, having a card, and also really accessing the financial services is a great utility. Then A is for Aadhaar. The this is the, again part of the rupee and the different kind of cards. This is the now 100 crore plus uh, people have been now given the Aadhaar. This is an innovation by India. 
that unique identity number or social security number, how it is leveraged for a payment system. And now the, the electronic benefit transfer of the government is being paid only through Aadhaar, bulk through Aadhaar. Now the idea is now even the state government services would also be done. As per the government's own admission, nearly uh, 55 crores of 1,000 crores uh, have been saved because of Aadhaar-based payment system, just making number as the financial address. And NPCI has brought the Aadhaar payment platform along with UIDI. Nanda Nilekani took the lead. He happened to be the innovation advisor post uh, UIDI he happened to be the innovation advisor for NPCI and helped in uh, setting it up. Then really obviously the mobile, use of mobile, a billion plus mobile, we have to leverage. And this leveraging mobile for money transfer and host of the government services. You know, the topping up with this, this trinity, then really the trinity, trinity of BTT trinity, which I call bills, toll and transit. So this is story number two, that wonderful solutions, financial inclusion technology, payment systems, and social re-engineering together. The third story is the deep commitment of the government to make it happen. The prime minister himself talking about it. He is the chief you know, executive officer or chief marketing officer, chief digital, digital officer of the country. Prime Minister in Man Ki Baat program is talking again and again about digital payments. Have you, have you heard of a weird thing like a digital payment uh, targets of 25 billion being part of the union budget? Union budget is meant for taxation. Now they're talking about the 25 billion. This 25 billion have been broken down into sub-targets of individual states, individual central government ministries, banks on the basis of number of customers. So the deep commitment for the government, I had the privilege of meeting Prime Minister Modi three times and in this digital payment uh, initiative. In all the three occasions, he has listened very intently what we want to do and how we want to really make it happen. So these, all the three stories, the NPCI as institutional innovation and interoperability, story of wonderful solution, the story of the deep commitment of the government combined with the commitment of the regulator and the banks makes me believe that India can lead the globe and the large economy to be the first last caste society in the world. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for that.